Hi guys, this is Raquel with paintsandglitter.blogspot.com and I'm going to film a video today showing you a couple of features on Design Space that um, I've been asked questions about um, and uh, the project that I'm working on just to give you an example as to how I use the Cricut to maximize its features for my use and um, and also the uh, the amount of paper that I use for a project, okay? So, today um, I was making flowers and I used Design Space for it. If you um, sign into Design Space and I'm going to tilt this a little bit here. Um, you uh, select to insert shape or images, I'm sorry, is um, in the menu you can select to look through cartridges, categories, all images, or you can also refine your search here. This is what I did just to make it easier. And I just typed 3D flowers. And I apologize, I do know how to spell. It's just <laughs> that I couldn't see it from this angle. Okay, on my keyboard. So here, there's a filter on this side. You can click on that and also just uh, streamline how it is that you want to search for your images. Just to make it easier for this video, I'm going to go ahead and click free just to show you the file that I used. And here is the file. It's called from Creative Bug Flowers. Um, it's M1403E. Okay, so I clicked on that one. Let me click on... There we go. Sorry about that. I just needed to click on the information button again. So anyway, I selected that and that's where you see the green check mark. And I also clicked here to insert. Okay. Now this inserts immediately. What you see is a box around four shapes. Okay. For pur the purpose of my project, I only needed three of those shapes. Okay. So what I did here is, since I didn't want to use these two for the flowers that I'm making, on my layers panel on the right hand side, I went ahead and clicked on these two eyes here. Okay. Now I can no longer see those shapes on my mat, which is exactly what I wanted. So um, what I wanted to show you is that a lot of times if you're working on a project and your piece of paper is not 12 by 12, then uh, you want to make sure that you can fit your flowers on the piece of paper that you do have on your mat. So just to give you an example, uh, what I w first want to do is, since the box, when I click here on these images, you see that box shows up. The first thing that I want to do here is, uh, down here, I want to ungroup them. And this gives me individual shapes to work with at this point. Okay, so say I want to cut all of my large flowers out of one paper, medium out of a second kind of paper, and the small ones out of a third, uh, I can do that. Uh, and to make it visually easier, I can insert a shape, and I'm going to click on, on the square, just as an example, okay? And I can edit the shape of that square here by unlocking the aspect ratio. And let's just say that my piece of paper is only 6 by... Um, I don't know, 6 by 5 or something like that, right? Okay, just as an example. I'm going to then lock that again. That way it stays that size. And I'm going to say, well, I want to cut all of my large flowers out of that one piece of paper. If I do this, it hides, okay? So I need to arrange it to the front by moving my flower to the front, okay? And now I can see, okay, if I use that size paper on my mat, this is how many flowers I can fit here by selecting the flower, which I just did, copying it and pasting it. And basically, I always like to grab it there by the center, that little plus sign. Paste it again. Okay. And then you can see, you can manipulate how many flowers you can actually fit on a 6x4 piece of paper. Okay, now I don't want to cut that piece of paper or that shape, that rectangle that I made. I, I don't need that, so I can either click X to get rid of it, or um, if I want to keep it around, I can go to the layers and hide it again like that, okay? 
But now I know this is how many flowers of that size I can fit on a 6x4 piece of paper, but I want to make sure that they don't get malaligned on my mat. How do I prevent that? I can make a box around them, and now I'm going to group them. Okay, now this allows me to group this on my mat, but if I click go, they're probably going to get lost in uh, in what Design Space does in, in terms of um, arranging um, the images, okay? So I'm going to select them again, okay? So say I had not selected them, I would select them again, and then I would click Attach, okay? Now I have an attached set of those flowers, and they're all going to be together. See how they changed color a little bit? And I can do the same thing, okay? can go back to my layers here, um, open up my square again, move the square, uh, make it whichever size I need depending on how many flowers I want to cut out of that one piece of paper, do the same process again, um, group my flowers, attach them, and then when I click go, okay, what's going to happen is that those flowers that, okay, so you see the medium and small, those are still individual, so it doesn't matter, okay? But the ones that I do want to cut as a group on my piece of paper now are together. They're not all over my mat, and now we know exactly where they're going to cut on my 6x4 piece of paper, okay? So now that I've cut all my shapes, let's suppose, I'm going to show you how I manipulated them to make the flowers. And I apologize for my camera angle. And the whole nine yards, the shaking. Okay, I'm going to see how I can prop this up without making it fall. So I apologize if I'm tilting too much. I think if I can make that stay, it'll work. <laughs> All right, so, okay. Here's my large flower, okay? And I, I know I have several here, but this was the large one that you saw on the screen. This was the medium one that you saw on the screen, okay? And then this was the small one, all right? I cut them out of cardstock that's double-sided and variegated in color. Um, because I'm using the Cricut, I, I highly suggest you cut out of cardstock, not paper, unless it's double-sided paper, uh, for the best results. Um, then, to make the flower look like a flower, and not a flat piece of paper, I take my jewelry pliers, and I start shaping them by pointing the pliers toward the center of my flower. In this case, there's a scallop here, so I'm taking advantage of that shape too. And I start twisting my paper. This will break down the fibers of my flower, and It'll give it the natural striations that a flower would have on its petals, okay? Um, and it's not going to look like much at first, but when you group it all together, you'll see. I may have repeated that one. But then on this particular size one, I'm also going to take the edges with my pliers, and I'm going to start curling them away. I hope that's not too out of focus for you, but I'm just taking those little edges there and I'm curling them away as if motion's kind of like you're turning a, a doorknob, okay? So now I have the other edges that need curling, so what I'll do is that I'll flip my flower over, I'll grab the opposing sides, okay? And then I'm going to curl those toward me. Okay, it's the same motion. Grabbing those edges and curling in. So that way my flower has that shape, okay? Then I'm gonna take it to my foam pad here. And I have this tool that has that rounded edge. You can use anything that's not too sharp, just a dull, um, uh, what do you call this? A uh, paintbrush would even do. Okay, so then you can 
start rolling the center like that okay and you want to be firm but not to the point where you tear your paper so that's why you want to use either a mouse pad or something cushy packaging material works great if you don't have something like this okay then you're able to get this shape okay so I did that with all of the large ones that's what you see here the medium ones all I did was just the centers and just curled again in a circular motion why why circular because you want what you're doing is breaking the fibers of the center of the flower okay and then for the smaller ones um, I just um, <clears throat> I just glued a uh, pearl or pearl piece there in the center okay so then all that's left to do is to take your large petal and put a very small dab of glue and what you want to do also is you want to make sure that you alternate the placement of the petals so that they're not all facing uh, one another but that there's they're in between the other two okay then you're going to do the same with the small piece you'll alternate it okay and don't be too concerned about perfection here because you have some wiggle room there all right so these are a little bit harder because they're smaller but once you have it there you can squeeze them and <clears throat> excuse me this uh paper will retain its shape for the most part there okay so there you have a more dimensional flower the large ones I did the same thing okay with the exception of um, using the files that I hid when I was showing you I, I did use those too then I took a, uh, a gem or piece of bling from uh, that I repurposed I put it in there I also put glossy accents and glitter and then I'm going to make these shabby looking so I will put gesso and paint or whatever glitter um, but you see how those are all curled like that yeah so there's that one and then this paper is the same as I used for the small flowers this is a uh, Momenta cardstock and this um, let's see here it doesn't say the weight the gram weight but I'd venture to say it's at least at, at least 80 pounds if not 110 because um, it's quite thick but it's it's wonderful because you could even spray it if you wanted to you could spray it with either um, glimmer uh, any water-based paint you could spray those and then use your heat gun and so then when you're done you can place it on your project uh, today I'm just making some cards so I used my Cricut to make this the with a print and cut feature to write the word mother on this little banner which will go here I use the Cricut for this swirl here in the background um, and then I'm just going to glue this shape here it's a little locket so I'll probably put a little heart in there um, and then now I have my own little flowers that I made using design space very easy that one's got a little gem to glitter so yeah that's it um, if you guys have any questions please let me know uh, I'll be more than happy to do any other type of tutorial uh, with design space uh, with the Cricut um, how how to make the banner or anything Anything you guys would like to know, I do appreciate you watching, and I hope you guys have a blessed day, and that you have fun creating. Take care. Bye-bye.